If you or someone you know are still wearing face masks, you should be aware of the fact that new science shows that these masks, including cloth face masks, disposable face masks, as well as N95 face masks, are enriched in toxic volatile organic compounds, phthalates, microplastics, titanium dioxide, and even cadmium. This is important science to acknowledge because unfortunately the mainstream media is not talking about these studies, although this was published actually by our own NIH. I'm going to share with you the findings from the Daily Mail titled, Mass Study Published by NIH Suggests that N95 COVID Masks May Expose Wearers to Dangerous Levels of Toxic Compounds Linked to Seizures as Well as Cancers. And I will add, these dangerous toxic compounds are also linked to low testosterone as well as altered semen production and even compromised immune health and endocrine function, which is important to acknowledge because we still see people wearing these masks in their cars riding their bikes. I literally have seen over the last several days, people wearing these outside when they're walking their dog, when they're uh, exercising. And it's important to acknowledge that hot, humid environments, as well as hot weather, actually increase the off-gassing of these toxic compounds, which several studies that we're going to review right now show that about 63% of these masks exceed the levels of volatile organic compounds and, and polyalkyl hydrocarbons, as well as these heavy metals and titanium dioxides, which is really problematic. So the Daily Mail writes, the study found that the chemicals released by these masks are eight times the recommended safety limit of toxic volatile organic compounds. Inhaling toxic volatile organic compounds has been linked to health issues like headaches and nausea, while prolonged and repeated exposure has been linked to organ damage and even cancer. Now, why would you risk getting cancer to prevent contracting COVID-19, particularly Omicron? We know that it's basically a mild cold. Even people who were very vigilant about wearing masks actually got infected. And we know that about 98% of people have antibodies and T-cell immunity to covid so the urgency to wear these masks all the time really is not warranted, but the potential downside of wearing them is you are exposing your body unnecessarily, I might add, to volatile organic compounds, persistent organic pollutants, phthalates, all of which have health ramifications. Now, this April 2023 study characterized the different toxic volatile organic compounds found in these commonly used disposable face masks, N95s, KF94s, which all of these are widely sold on Amazon. Here's the image here. You can see all of the different volatile organic compounds. Now, lest I remind you, if you go to Home Depot, you go to a, a hardware store, if you want to buy household paint and you want to buy eco-friendly paint, they advertise that this is low VOC. And we should have a disclaimer. These are not low VOC masks. 63% of these have super high levels of these toxic volatile organic compounds, microplastics and phthalates, which have health ramifications. It's also important to recognize that these are in the environment now. These are being disposed in the ocean. You've probably seen them on sidewalks. They're getting into the lakes, rivers, streams, and they're increasing the microplastic accumulation in animals, which is really problematic. So there are hidden concerns and health exposure to mask wearing and this is why we've been talking about this topic for a long time. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused this dichotomous thinking fallacy. You know, people would say, if you don't wear a mask, you're uh, killing people and you're not saving lives. But most of us didn't feel the need to wear these because we already contracted the virus. We have immunity. We are not spreading pathogens around. So the scientists say in this study, we assess the types and concentrations of volatile hazardous chemicals, including volatile organic compounds, VOC, and how they are released depending upon mask use and conditions. This study was published in the journal Ecotoxicology and Environmental Safety and is, is actually on the NIH's website. Dr. Stuart Fisher, an internal medicine physician in New York, told the DailyMail.com that strong conclusions can be drawn from the study. However, he said that increasingly evidence has shown that there are drawbacks to mask wearing. He added that there seems to be diminishing returns on the need for masks. In the latest study, researchers tested 14 disposable and cloth masks purchased online by measuring the amount of toxic volatile organic compounds in them. Many of these disposable masks are made of thermoplastic polypropylene and polyurethane nylon. Now, it's important to recognize that there's a wide variability in the amount of chemicals that are in here, suggesting that there's not good quality control in the mask manufacturing process anyway, which is probably why, why many people who wore the mask ended up getting COVID regardless of how much they did or didn't wear the mask. But the highest concentration of total volatile organic compounds were actually found in the KF94 mask, which I don't think is that popular. 
I think it's really popular in parts of Asia, uh, as well as disposable surgical masks and also the N95 masks. But the cloth masks actually contain the lowest levels, thankfully, of these uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals. Now, the scientists say as masks are worn close to the face, temperature may increase beyond the ambient temperature due to body heat. Sunlight and ambient temperature also act as a factor by increasing the temperature of the mask. When the temperature of the mask rises, the types and concentrations of volatile organic compounds emitted from the mask can rise within it, meaning you're probably going to expose yourself unnecessarily to more volatile organic compounds if you wear these things outside. Now, here's figure one showing the total concentrations of the toxic volatile organic compounds found in a diverse array of different types of masks. And the KF94 was really high as well as the N95 and also disposable surgical masks. So just to remind you that these toxic volatile organic compounds and phthalates and microplastics are found ubiquitous. They're in our food, in our air, they are in all sorts of food packaging. Also, there are polyalkyl fluoridated compounds found in, in masks as well. We're going to talk about those studies soon. So if you would like to enhance your body's detoxification processes naturally, I strongly suggest considering an acetylcysteine known as NAC paired with glycine. We are for this over at Myoscience. Studies show that this combination of NAC as well as glycine enhances the production of your body's most important antioxidant as well as intracellular detoxification molecule known as glutathione. You can check out the reviews over at Myoscience. I will link that below. Also going in the sauna is a great way to excrete some of these volatile organic compounds and toxic chemicals that are found in food packaging, cookware, clothing, furniture, and obviously now face masks. So I'll put links below to different solutions that you can check out. You can use the code POD podcast over at myoscience.com. Now, again, we talked about this extensively over several videos over the past couple of years, but the political environment, the temperature was just not in a place where people were receptive to receiving this message because of the fallacy of dichotomous thinking. And here is a, an image that we talked about. And we talked about this particular study, COVID-19 false dichotomies and a comprehensive review of the evidence regarding public health, COVID-19 symptomology, SARS-CoV-2 transmission, mask wearing, and reinfection. Again, if you didn't wear a mask, you were considered a grandma killer. And that dichotomous thinking prevented helpful conversation about risk-benefit analysis. Why would you expose a kid to toxic levels of endocrine-disrupting chemicals to prevent potentially the sniffles? And we know that kids were not wearing masks really well. You know, they had to wear them in the classroom but then they would eat lunch in the classroom. They'd all take the mask off and put it on their wrist. I saw so many people at restaurants putting these things on their wrist and exposing their hands all around the mask and then putting the mask on their face. That is not really a good use of proper mask hygiene and wearing. I mean, if, you, if you're if you a healthcare pr practitioner, you know that you have to go get fitted for an N95 mask. I mean, there's a, a much more rigorous application of a safe and effective mask usage, but that wasn't conveyed to the public. And so I think a lot of people unnecessarily expose themselves to these toxic chemicals. And we have a dossier of literature now. And I just want to finish up this video and, and share with you just a few quotes from these different studies talking about the characterization of VOCs from face masks. This particular study found that there was a diverse array of volatile organic compound species, some of which are toxic. The chemical structures of major volatile organic compounds were identified and they are uh, found and they're part of the mask production process. High concentrations are emitted from surgical masks and, and the, the concentrations peak after one hour after opening them from the pack. So let's say you're a surgeon, a nurse, a traveling healthcare professional, occupational therapist, physical therapist, and you work with elderly, let's just say, and you have to wear these for your occupation or your, someone in your family or household is high risk and you have to wear one, at least take it out of the package and let it off gas for an hour or two before putting it on. Various studies show that by doing that, you can help to release some of the microplastics and volatile organic compounds. Now, uh, a, a future study, this is actually going to be published in the Octor October edition of Trends in Analytical Chemistry titled Microplastics Released from Face Masks Used During the COVID-19 Pandemic, a review of the characterization techniques. The scientists say a disposable face mask is able to release millions of plastic particles under controlled experimental conditions, as well as toxic additives such as heavy metals, dyes, phthalate esters, and organophosphate esters, among others. Now, these actually increase microbial communities in the environment, causing what's known as the plastosphere, causing the growth of pathologic organisms, which are harming animals. Now, I, I add this because remember the big stink about banning straws? We were so adamant, people were so passionate about banning straws. 
And yet you have thousands, millions of people wearing new masks every day. And they're throwing these. I see these on hiking trails out in the middle of nowhere. I see them in the sidewalks. I know you've seen them as well. It's really unfortunate what has happened to our environment. So this is not only harmful for human health, but also our ecosystem, our uh, aquatic species, fish and uh, frogs and these things are exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals. Another study published in 2022 titled Face Masks, a potential source of phthalate exposure for humans. The scientists say that these chemicals can be easily released into the environment and enter the human body where they exert a series of adverse effects. For instance, phthalate exposure was reported to affect fetal growth and cause reproductive toxicity. Phthalates have been proven to affect testosterone and semen parameters. We know testosterone is really on the decline. We know that fertility is at an all-time low, which is really unfortunate, and that these phthalates are linked with penile birth defects and other effects related to androgen receptor dysfunction. Now, another scoping review was published in 2023, and this included 24 different studies analyzing 631 masks over the course of 17 minutes to 15 days, and they were evaluating the content and release of different toxic volatile organic compounds. What these scientists say is 63% of the mass showed alarming results with high micro and nanoplastic particles being released. And these exceed the health regulations for the amount of phthalates and volatile organic compounds you're supposed to be exposed to. And they also found that these masks contain lead, cadmium, mercury, titanium dioxide, and other toxic compounds, which is problematic. And so you can see here, on this chart right here, you can see the change in the volatile organic compound release. And after about three to four hours, that's when you start to see a rapid decline in the release of these different volatile organic compounds, which is really important to acknowledge. So again, if you have to wear one of these, you know, your family's making you wear one or your, uh, your boss is making you wear one, at least let it sit out for six to eight hours, which is important. Last but not least, this study was published in 2021 titled On the Flip Side of Mask Wearing, Increased Exposure to Volatile Organic Compounds and a Risk Reduction Solution. The scientists say that surgical face masks from around the world are loaded with semi-volatile and volatile organic compounds, including alkalines, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons known as PAHs, phthalate esters, and reactive carbonyls at levels from nanograms to micrograms, which is actually quite high. You don't want to be inhaling microgram levels of these compounds. So the scientists say that naphthalene was a most abundant mask-borne polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, as well as phthalates and other anti-androgenic agonists, which are not good. Uh, these are, are widely detectable in at least one-third of the samples. Furthermore, there's large mass-to-mass -mass variability in the residue of volatile organic compounds, revealing the uneven quality of mass, which is important to recognize. If there's uneven manufacturing consistency, why would you even want to wear it? Especially considering the fact that you're going to be exposed to all these volatile organic compounds and, and anti-androgens and potentially cause genotoxicity. There's, there's mutagenic carbonyls, which are directly carcinogenic. So really not good stuff, my friends. I, I really wish that our health apparatus actually talked about the potential downsides, especially for kids. It's really unfortunate. So the scientists say, we confirm that masks containing more residues of volatile organic compounds lead to significantly higher exposure levels and are associated with disease risk to the wearer, which should warrant the attention of general public and regulatory agencies. So again, there's a lot of research here showing that these things are releasing toxic compounds. I would minimize your exposure to these. Leave them outside if you have to wear one for at least six hours. Don't wear it in the hot sun. And if, it, if you're sweating all over the place, probably best to take it off. And, and exercising in hot weather with these is probably a bad idea, my friends. And keeping them off kids, especially, uh, I didn't talk about this, didn't share the science on this, but in my reading and research for this particular video, the colored masks actually contain higher levels of these different compounds. So I do see kids at my daughter's school with pink ones, with blue ones, with purple ones to make them more fun for the kids. Those colors and dyes are actually increasingly, they might increase the exposure of these volatile organic compounds and harmful chemicals. So again, there are downsides to this. I wish this was talked about more. Now we have to deal with the environmental aftermath. These are put in landfills. They're dumped into the ocean. They're, we're exposing our all of our marine life to these, these compounds. And the heat exposure, the uh, seawater is causing dispersion of microplastics, which is making the environment increasingly more toxic, which is not good, my friends. So that's why I'm a huge fan of drinking filtered water, going in the sauna, exercise. Any sweat is better than no sweat at all for getting rid of these compounds. And if you want to increase your body's ability to detoxify these things, supporting glutathione biosynthesis might be helpful with N-acetylcysteine and glycine. There's ample research to show that. So hopefully you found this video helpful. You know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment below, and please share this with a friend if you found some value. And we'll catch you on a future video down the road.